Okay, so here we're going to uh, be using our look dev template scene and bringing in the asset. We'll look at bringing in a model and also the textures, creating materials within this environment, and we're going to be highlighting tips and tricks during the process and how to overcome some of those uh, naming issues I was just talking about. So this uh, template scene here is available on the Foundry forums and the link will be in the description, so it's downloadable. And this contains a, a, a simple base template just to save you a bit of time and understand a few of the concepts in Katana. Adding to that, I'm utilizing some of the new features in Katana 3, like textures in the viewport for my HDR visualization. Uh, I'm also uh, adding a few uh, features with the macro here, like we can disable the color check balls and Macbeth chart. Um, we can spin the environment light around, which um, will actually work in the viewport and in the actual rendered through the light scene. And uh, yeah, so we're going to place our geometry in. We've got cameras. Um, I've created a default material. It's the only thing different to the actual download at the moment. Um, this is like the, the default applied material to anything that comes in. Uh, then I have an area for material assignments, which we'll be using. Uh, an area to bake down all our look dev work into what's called a look file. An area to add any lights for testing our materials, if we like. And then uh, rendering out with AOVs and uh, rendering out the final images, like so. So let's start by bringing in the asset. Okay, so I'm going to be using the geometry in area here, and I'm going to create an alembic in node. Alem click. Okay, so I'm going to hit the edit button and bring in my asset chameleon v3.epic. I can uh, change the area in the scene graph where it likes to go, so I like to put my characters in a character folder and then it moves it, instead of it being in an asset folder, it's now geo, oh, it should be, I'm not connected in yet, that's why. So when we connect it in, we can see the asset, it gets my default material because of my template, and I can see character chameleon here now. It's not placed very well, we'll need to rotate our scene around as well. Before I do that, I'll bring in the tree and name this guy um, chameleon geo. I'm going to copy paste that and call this tree geo. Connect that in. We're going to briefly have two chameleons in the scene, but let's change that to the tree and put it in a folder called environment. So now we've got two, the two objects in place. I just want to temporarily spin it around um, just because uh, it would be easier than spinning the look dev scene around and it will give me the opportunity to show you some new nodes. So I'm dropping down two transform 3D nodes. So this allows us to have a fixed node for the transformation. So this is a different way of working if you're like a Maya person or similar. But what we can do is, um, you know, the idea is just to have a node for everything. So everything is sort of forced to be non-destructive. Um, so what I've done there, I've connected the chameleon group to the path, and then I've put a 90 degrees in rotation there. It didn't bring the tree with me, but what I can do is I can uh, shift click on my edit button. That adds two items to my parameters pane. I can now hold down shift control, middle mouse the ro on the rotate parameter, and drop it here. And now uh, what will happen once I connect, I didn't connect the tree to here. You need to tell it what it's rotating. So it makes sense. Um, so now, whenever I rotate this node, this one will follow along. It's like an expression link or whatever you want to call it. Every program calls it something different. Um, if I want an actual gizmo to move it, I need to come to Make Interactive. Yes. And now, when I've got Chameleon selected, I can move it around. And check out the, uh, check out the new gizmos. So this is the Hydra Viewer new gizmo. We've got proper XZ uh, manipulator, XY, um, that we can move it around. Um, 
the uh, transforms aren't linked. That's why we're not seeing that change. So I probably should zero that out and link that as well. So it's not like a full parent. You'll, it'll sort of it'll take a second and then update. Um, it's like a little script that runs, but um, you get the idea. Okay, so we've got him in place. That's good enough for our work. Um, in the look dev scene, if you want to move around the um, color checker, it's always going to get in your way, sorry. But if we go to, if you open up the macro and come to the look dev chart, um, you'll see that it's connected to color check and it's already interactive. So you don't really need to go into the macro, sorry. You can just come to um, that color check chart and you can move that around or wherever you want as well. So. Um, just features of the look dev scene. So just moving the camera around now to frame the shot a little better. Um, I'm not doing the same framing as the actual concept artwork I, sh I showed before. Um, we'll just use 1080 for here for this demo. Okay, so we've brought in the asset, we've rotated it around, we've set up a little script to bring the tree as well. Um, but let's continue on. We've got the asset in the scene now and we can do a quick check um, of the UVs in the UV viewer and you can see that there's our UDIMs for our body and I can check out the accessories and stuff as well. So on Windows the UV viewer comes up as a separate pane unless we dock it so I'm going to dock that up here. Custom UIs are awesome in Katana. Experiment like I have and make one that you like and save it up here. You can see I've got a few for whether on two screens or one screen. Okay, so now I've got them in the scene. I'm going to create some default, uh, some base materials to start working with. So that's what's next.